We're going to compute areas under the normal curve using a TI-84. The keystrokes are the same if you're using a TI-83. Here I've drawn a normal curve. We'll be using z-scores. A z-score of 0 represents the mean. I'll mark my scale here as z-scores. I've got positives on the right and negatives on the left. Whenever we're computing areas under the normal curve, whether we're using statistical tables or the calculator, we're always going to be inputting z-scores. For our first example, let's look at the area under the normal curve for z-scores between negative 1 and 2. To access the area in the calculator, I'm going to go to the distribution menu, which is right above the vars key, just next to the uh, lower arrow key. So I've got my calculator turned on. I'm going to go ahead and choose the distribution menu, so second, followed by the distribution menu. And I'm going to choose normal CDF. This gives me a cumulative distribution frequency, which means that it's adding the areas. So I choose number two. What it's looking for for the parameters are the leftmost z-score, comma, the rightmost z-score. So for ours, for the normal CDF, we're going to plug in negative one, comma, two. So I'm going to type in negative one using the negative at the bottom. So negative one, commas above the seven, two, enter. What it's giving me is an area, and I'll just approximate this, of 0 0.81, I'll round to 0 0.819. So the area under the normal curve between one and two, I'll shade that in, between negative one and two, is about 0.819. Remember the area under the entire curve is 1, so this is a very reasonable answer. Um, number 2, let's look at the area from 0 all the way over to the right. So we want the area under the normal curve where the z-score is greater than 0. If I sketch a normal curve, just to give you an idea of what area we're looking for, here's the z-score of 0. We want all of the z-scores greater than that, so we're looking for the area to the right of 0. Remember the entire area is equal to 1, so we're expecting an area here equal to half of that, which would be 0.5. But I'm going to ask the calculator to do this. I'm going to go back into the distribution menu, but I'll show you in just a second how you can retrieve the last input. But just to remind you how to get there, I go second distribution, so second distribution. I'm choosing normal CDF. For this one, I'm going to be looking at 0 for the leftmost. And then for the rightmost, I want to go on forever here. Well, there's two ways to signify that you're going off to infinity, essentially. You can use the exponent key. This is a scientific exponent key. And just say, uh, you know, like 1 times 10 to the 99th power or something. So you can use E99. But significant z-scores are really just 1, 2, and 3, and maybe up to 4. So we could also use just something you know, sort of large for a z-score, like um, you know, say 12 or something like that. So I'll show you how these both work. So I'm going to go ahead and do E99. So this is roughly infinity. So for the normal CDF, I type in 0, comma. To get to the E, I'm going to use the second on the comma key. So second comma key, 99. This is signifying a huge number off to the right parenthesis, and then I hit enter, and I get an area that is approximately 0.49 repeating. So 0.49 repeating would be that 0.5 that we're looking for. But look what happens when I put in something like 12 instead. So I'm going to go ahead and do normal CDF with a 12 instead. Rather than going to the distribution menu, I'm going to go second entry. So second entry to grab that last input, but I can edit it now. So I'm going to go over to the E99. I'm going to type a 12 right over it. I want to get rid of the 9, so I hit the delete key. So now I've got 0, 12. I hit enter. It gives me exactly the same thing. So when you're looking for a very large z-score, whether you're on the right or on the left, you can use the E99, or you can just use a relatively large z-score, which would be something like 12. Um, number three. So for number three, let's word this next one as a probability, because areas translate into probabilities. So let's look at the probability that our z-score is less than uh, 1.3. Okay, so again, I'll really quickly sketch a normal curve. 
there's 0, so I'll say 1.3 is about here. I'm looking for this area. Now it's more than half the area under the normal curve, so I'm expecting an area that's larger than 0.5. That's 0.5, and then we've got some more additional area here. Well, to get this into the calculator, I'm going to use the normal CDF function again. Now the leftmost, I'm going off forever to the left, so it's going to be negative infinity, but we saw that 12 works, so let's just go ahead and use something like negative 12. You could use the negative E99 if you wanted to. So I'm going to use negative 12, and then the rightmost is 1.3. I just barely had enough room. Now I'm going to use the second entry feature again, but you can also go to the distribution menu. I'm going to use second entry. Now I can edit this. I'm going to change the 0 to negative 12, comma, and I want a 1.3 for the rightmost. I'll close that with a parenthesis, and I come up with an area that we expected, so the probability that a z-score is less than 1.3, certainly greater than 0.5, we get 0 0.903 if I round to three decimal places. You can also use this to um, find z-scores that correspond with an area. I'm just going to do one example of that. So number four, we're going to find the area, um, let's see, find the, uh, find the z-score that cuts off the middle 20% uh, of the area. Okay, so we're not finding an area this time, we're finding a z-score. Actually, we're going to be looking for two z-scores, since we're going to be cutting off the middle 20% of the area under the normal curve. I'm going to just a little more paper here so I can draw you a picture. I'm going to go ahead and draw you a picture. The picture, a normal curve again. We're looking for the middle 20%. Remember, zero is there. So the middle 20% might look something like this. But I'm centered over a z-score of zero. So I'm looking for these two z-scores. When the calculator finds a z-score that goes with an area, it always works from the left. Let me show you first a couple of things. This is 0.2 here, so my area is 20% or 0.2, which leaves me with 0.8. So 1 minus 0.2, one's the total area. 1 minus 0.2 is 0.8, but 0.8 is split between these two tails. So in this area here, so 0.8 divided by 2, is 0.4. So I've got 0.4 on the left tail and 0.4 in the right tail. Whenever I ask the calculator to find a z-score, it looks for an area from the left. I'm going to go back to the distribution menu. Distribution. Now I use the inverse norm. That's going to do the inverse of what we were doing before. The inverse norm takes an area and it finds the z-score. The inverse norm wants an area from the left. So I don't type in 0.2, I type in the area from the left that gets me to the z-score. So I type in 0.4. So I go ahead and do inverse norm. I type in the area from the left, which is 0.4. I hit enter, and I get a negative z-score. That's what I was expecting. I get negative 0.253. I was, remember, I was looking for two z-scores, one on the left, which is a negative z-score, and a z-score on the right, which is going to be the positive of that value. So my z-scores that cut off those values, so I have z-scores of plus and minus 0.253. For that middle 20%, we're looking at a negative 0.253 on the left, and a positive 0.253 as the z-score on the right.